Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Outside Looking In. My name is Bruce Negger, and we're talking about the issues that emanate from Montgomery County and beyond. How you doing? I'm doing all right. It's Saturday. It's Saturday. Charlie Boulder says it's Saturday. Guess what? You'll never guess what. I got a Miller Lite. Zoinks! A Miller Lite, really? Yes, I have a Miller Lite. And I'm ready to talk about things that annoy me this week. You know what? The week didn't suck. Last week, everything sucked, right? It sucks. That was the name of the podcast. It just, you know, sometimes at the end of these things, it's like, what do you want to name your podcast? And I realized everything sucked, what I talked about before. But this day, today, Saturday, I feel like a manly man. I've done manly stuff this week. Bruce, what could that be? Well, first today I had to take a bar out of, we had a a bar, a structured bar that was in the house for 10 years. I've been down in Maryland for 10 years and this bar, we moved it around because it was just too big to get rid of. So today I decided to get rid of it, open up space in the basement. I had a saw, I had a mallet, I had a hammer and I took it down. I destroyed it. I turned it into dust, made me feel manly. But I realized if you got the right tools, stuff like that's not so hard, right? It's like when you don't have the right tools, when all you got is like a a little, you know, a screwdriver trying to get this stuff out. But I smashed, I done, I did everything. I done it. Yo, Adrian, I done it. What else did I do this week? I changed a tire. My dad had a flat tire. I went out there, I changed a tire. But again, the right equipment. This time I knew I was going to change a tire. It wasn't a surprise. My dad got a flat tire. I said, I'm going out there. I'm going with the right equipment. And like, why is this manly stuff, Bruce? Why is this so important to you? It is important to me because it's the first flat tire I've been able to change in a long, long time. Not that I've been lazy, mind you. I don't want to tell you that I've been lazy and I'm I'm, I'm afraid to change a tire. Uh, But the thing is, I had a CRV, a Honda CRV. This is my old one. Flat tire. I got a flat tire in New York City. I was at a parking garage, so it was okay. So I'm at there and like, I can change this tire, put on the spare, etc. I can do it. And it's not going to be a problem. I don't have to call Geico. I don't have to call AAA. I don't have to call anybody. I'm a man. I can do it. So I'm out there. I'm doing it. I get the jack, put it under the the CRV, click, 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 get it up high enough. I get the tire, the flat tire off because it's stuck. I try to put the new tire on. Not going to fit. I got to jack it up more. Jack, 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 jack. I get to the top of the jack and it doesn't, it's not high enough. I can't put the tire on. What the, who the, where the, I mean, what's going on? So I sit there. I got the the car on the jack. I got the tire. Can't get it on because the jack doesn't go high enough. I got to call AAA. I got to call Geico. Guy comes like 40 minutes later and he looks at the stuff and he starts laughing. He goes, you tried, huh? And I go, yeah, I tried. I said, you know, (laughs) I tried to fix a, a flat tire. That's something that I can do. That's in the manual of how to survive. He goes, you couldn't do it, huh? He goes, no, I couldn't. I'm telling you, I told him. The jack wouldn't go up high enough. He goes, yeah, you're right. The jack doesn't go up high enough. The CRVs, the jack doesn't go up high enough. Then why do you have it? Why do you have it? This guy's got to change the tire for me. So this time, once again, I went out to Pep Boys, Manny, Mo, and Jack. Boy, they're getting a lot of press on this program. But I went out there, and I bought a real jack, something that will get it, the car up high, etc. My dad's car is smaller, so I don't know if this one really works, but I got it up. I had something for my knee so my knee wouldn't hurt. I had the, 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 the real tire jack. Pew, pew, pew. Not, not the electric one, but that one with the four. So I was able to spin off the tire, put the other tire on, did it, done, boom. And I was happy. I was very, very happy because I was able to get that car up. It, was, it just, it just uh, validation is the word, right? Validation. Because I haven't been able to do it in a while. And I'm like, I should be able to change a tire. But if the jack doesn't work. But it also says if you got the right tools, you can do the job. Don't go in there with fake tools. If you have real tools, tools that work, tools that enable you to do the job, then you can get it done. Doesn't that say something for everything though? If you are enabled to do the job. If you have the right tools. Sounds like a life lesson there. Remember that. But anyway, so I'm pulling off the tire and I pull off the the spare, the spare tires. I don't understand spare tires. You know, all of these cars should have a big enough trunk. 
yeah, you're going to lose some gas mileage or whatever, but you should have a big enough trunk to have a real tire fit in there. These spare tires are a joke. If you get a, a flat on the Pennsylvania Turnpike and the next freaking exit is 45 miles away, this little tire is not going to make it. You know, there's certain things. It's like, it's not going to make it, but make real spare tires. I, I, and what I mean by that, make real size, open up the trunks, put them in there, have a real spare tire. That old CRV, that was the funny part. It's like, I think that Jack was built for like a small spare tire, but we were able to have a real spare tire because it was on the outside of the car. But this spare tire, what's the point of having it if it's going to blow out in 20 miles? And that was the funny part because my dad had a flat, put on the spare, and then the spare got a flat. Zoinks. It's like, what's the purpose? Where's it taking me? And then he's got a cell phone too. He ended up in a neighborhood where, uh, I don't know, it was it was far from the house. In the neighborhood, we weren't sure. He had some business out somewhere. So he had to go out there. And so I go out there to find it. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, he's got a cell phone. But if his cell phone crapped out, what do you do? What do you do? Seriously, what do you do? Because if it craps out, it's not like you can knock on someone's door. No one's answering the door from you anymore. And if he could make it to a gas station, do you think they have a pay phone? I mean, you hope that the guy's nice enough behind the counter to let you borrow the phone or whatever. But they might not even. Well, I'm sure they do have a landline. But it's like even now, it's like I, I got quarters. I, got, I, I can't make a phone call. If your phone goes out, where are you making a phone call from? You know, even at the gas station, where are you making a phone call from? Those closed gas stations, right? <laughs> the neighborhood closed gas station. They used to have a pay phone. You used to be able to make a call. Pfft, done. So all of this technology we got, all of this stuff, all of this advancements actually puts us back a little bit because it's convenient, but it's not emergency worthy. But no one really looks at that. And I can understand, but it's just one of those situations. Until you get stuck in it, you don't really appreciate it or find a way to deal with it. And because of the cell phone, I looked around my house. The other day, I was standing in front of my stove. I was boiling some water. I can do that. I can cook. <laughs> I can boil water. But I was boiling some water, and I look at the stove. It's an electric stove because, God forbid, we have a gas stove and ruin ourselves. We have an electric stove because we this area was a farm, and they just didn't feel like putting in gas lines. That's why we have an electric stove. But anyway, the point being, I look at the stove. And the stove has all these buttons, all this stuff, self-cleaning. I don't think we've ever touched warming drawer. I don't think we've ever touched a couple other things we've never touched. We hit bake. We hit the stove to turn on, etc. Maybe broil. But how do you really broil in an electric oven? You figure that out. It's not my deal. But anyway, what I'm saying is we have all this technology in our hands. And then like I get new iPhone stuff. Uh, I got a new update the other night. I don't use half of the technology that they uh, put upon me. I don't know how to use it. Maybe I should take the time, but is it really worth I don't know. Is it worth it? Someone has to tell me. You have to tell me. Finding out what my iPhone can do. The best thing my iPhone can do is scan stuff. This way I don't have to put it on the scanner anymore and the printer and all of that. I can scan stuff from my phone. That is an achievement. That is progress. Everything else, pfft, I don't know. You know, it's like when they put the third or fourth button on video games. I stopped playing. After you have A and B and maybe C to do something or a button on the side to do something, after that, I don't want to play anymore. My kids are like, oh, I don't want to study Madden. I don't want to study plays for Madden. I didn't play football because I didn't feel like studying a book. That's not true. My mom wouldn't let me play till 11th grade. And by the time in 11th grade, I'm like, okay, I can go out for the football team, be the third string tight end and have Michael Arterbury run over me every practice. I was like, uh-uh, not going to happen. See ya. Bye-bye. Because I'm smart. <laughs> it's just like I'm playing hockey and baseball. I am not playing football. I don't need that. I don't want it. It's too late. If you don't start football like in sixth grade, seventh grade or middle school, forget about it. But the technology, I, I seriously, it just passes me by. All of this stuff in the car, it's got all this technology. And meanwhile, the, the service guy that I went to, he's like, I don't know how to turn off the, the low tire light. It's like uh, the computers are getting too advanced. Well, then maybe it's time to retire. <laughs> I don't know about that. Especially in cars, though, because it's like all of this stuff 
All of these features, it can do this, it can do that, all of this stuff. And people still buy cars based on how many cup holders there are. That's how simple it gets. And that's the truth. That's not a lie. That's research. I don't know who did it, but I read it on the internet, so that's the truth. So I was looking today, there are ESPN, right? The world leader in sports. ESPN is firing everybody. They're getting rid of the big name talent. They're going to hire Pat McAfee. Why? Another thing, maybe that's a technology situation where I don't get it. But they're hiring Pat McAfee to run some show and do something. Good for him. He's making his money, etc. But other guys are going. Behind the scenes people, in front of the camera people, people who've been there for 21 years, people who were institutions, at ESPN at least, are gone. It started to make me think about stuff, about growth and smart growth, right? We're, we ESPN needs to get NHL hockey. It needs to get basketball. It needs to get Sunday night baseball. We're going to pay and pay and pay. And then finally, you're going to have to pay the piper. Because you can't keep spending money. We, we are going to dominate. We are the worldwide leader in sports. We're going to have every sport. And now, when the ratings don't come in and no one really cares that much anymore... The chickens come home to roost, and what do you do? You get rid of people who've been there for 40 or 20 years. And it's not a youth movement. we got to get the youth people. It's because it's a cost-saving measure. I mean, is there such a thing as smart growth anymore? We all want companies to grow. we got to grow. we got to grow. But there is a point, like humans, where you stop growing. You stop. You hit the ceiling. And you shouldn't grow anymore because you can't sustain it afterwards. And what am I talking about? Bruce, what are you talking about? I'm talking about Amazon, right? Amazon, going to rule the world, rule the world. They're by and large from Wally. If you've ever seen the mo- uh, movie Wally, Amazon is by and large. It was prescient. That, you know I love that word. But anyway, it was, it was Amazon before Amazon. Jeff Bezos must have watched that movie and said, yeah, I can get into space. I can get into groceries. I can get into uh, cloud, I, cloud programming, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. But it's... Now Amazon's cutting back. I told you they were supposed to open a store here, one of those uh, green grocer stores or whatever where you just go in and they're like, we don't have the money for it. We're backing out of it. We're not going to open this uh, uh, distribution center. We're going to cut people from that distribution center. You know, Amazon was supposed to rule the world. Everybody, oh, Amazon, that's the company. We have to be part of it. We have to be brainwashed by Amazon. Brainwashed. That's where I want to be because they're the growth leader. They can't sustain it. Who else? And again, I don't mean to be picking on this company, but I'm just saying it. Peloton, right? During the pandemic, Peloton thought they ruled the world. And they did rule the world. And then we come out of the pandemic when people can start, you know, first of all, they had manufacturing problems. So that was a huge thing. Sometimes you can't handle the growth because you're not ready for it, especially if you have a manufacturing situation in a pandemic mind you. But the other part is, you know, they, they, they were the king of the world. And then all of a sudden people were able to go back to gyms or other people got into competition with them. You know, we're going to put so much money. We're going to hire so many people. We're going to rule. And then all of a sudden you realize that you can't deal with this growth. There has to be a point where you have to say, okay, I'm good. I'm good with where I'm at. The shareholders, the shareholders, the shareholders, you know what? You got to tell the shareholders, are you making money? Yes. We'd like to make more money. Well, do you want to make more money and cut everything and not care about the worker, not care about the people, not care about the product? Then we can do that. But if you don't want to do that, you know, I mean, if that's what you're in it for, then you're then you're Gordon Gecko, Blue Star, right? Horse Blue Horseshoe says buy Blue Star, whatever it was. Because that's what it comes down to. It comes down to greed is good. We're going to do, we're going to do for the shareholders. Sometimes you got to do for the company. Because if you're doing for the shareholders, then you're not thinking about smart growth. It's a misnomer. There is no such thing as smart growth anymore, or at least the way it's laid out. If you have a market, we're going to overdo, we're going to overdo podcasts, right? I'm on a podcast. I'm doing this out of my basement because no one will take me anymore, which is fine. I, I never had this grand illusion or delusions. That's someone I'm going to hook up with somebody or whatever. But you pay Joe Rogan all of this money. You pay uh, not my daddy, call me daddy girl or whatever. That much money. Spotify's cutting everybody. Harry and Harry and Megan, $20 million. And finally, they got the big, 
right there because they weren't putting out enough content. They put out 11 episodes for $20 million. Oh, suck it. You suck. Suck. You suck for that because you're taking money from other people's mouths, people who could actually work and do it. But it's not about the money. What I'm talking about is Spotify thought they could rule the world with podcasts. Overreach. Everybody. I mean, I think that's the theme of this podcast. Of, 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 and not this particular one, but the ones that I always talk about. Congress, they get in. The Democrats get in. Beat the Republicans. Overreach. Everything the Republicans did were taken back. Republicans get in. Uh, everything the Democrats did were overreach and taken back. And, and companies, private companies or shareholder companies, we're going to run podcasting. Well, there's no iHeart out there, right? There's no Odyssey out there there with podcasting oh you're not the only ones but if we get everybody with our podcast joe rogan and we're going to spend 40 million dollars 20 where's the money coming from it's unsustainable it's unsustainable and you know what the whole thing is you don't need an accounting degree you can just see it if you're observant you can just see what i'm talking about you can't afford that espn you can't afford that amazon you gotta lighten up a little bit it's unsustainable. And this whole world about sus- sustainability, there are things, that, you know, we, we have to be sustainable with, with air and with food and all of this kind of stuff. I'm not, what I'm saying here, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that's wrong. That's, I, I hear you with sustainability. But with corporate gains and growth, unsustainable, but that's okay. And speaking about Amazon, I need to talk to their drivers. Stop putting packages behind the garage. Put them to the side of the garage. I'm sorry. People are like, well, you should look when you back out. Yeah, I don't normally expect a freaking package to be under my tires. I'm only backing out at 20 or 10 or whatever. It's not like I'm coming out like I'm Batman coming out of the mountain from 1960. I'm not coming out of the bad cave. I'm backing out softly. And it, the, the things don't even pick up. It doesn't go. Watch out. Watch out. Stop putting packages behind a garage. Stop being lazy. Bring them up to my damn steps, especially these little packages from Chewy's or whatever. Come on. FedEx too. FedEx is a little bit better, but uh, Amazon, yeah, they could get out, throw it right there. We took a picture. Oh, it's there. It's not my account, by the way. It's my wife's account. So all of her packages are the ones I'm running over. So stop it. It's unsustainable. That's what it is. It's unsustainable when you put your packages behind my garage. I'm talking about overreach, right? There's another thing about this. Everybody's got a problem with ADHD. Everybody's got attention deficit disorder or whatever. Whatever it is. You know, but the thing about it, we we talk about it and there's studies and social media and depression. These things are real, okay? Don't tell me they're not. I know that they're real. I can see it in my own kids. I can see it in certain people. Luckily, the social media aspect is it hasn't hit my home. Yeah, my kids are on Reddit and they're on other things and they're watching stupid stuff. They're just getting dumber. They're not getting depressed. And I'm happy about that. You know, sadly, I'm happy about that, that they got their phone and they're not looking to see what friend got the new Air Jordans, etc., or who's worthless and useless and all of that kind of stuff. And I, I read these studies and I ask my kids and I'm like, do you think your life has a purpose? And, you know, I want to hear that. My my oldest is like, Dad, I'm 16. You know, I haven't figured out my purpose yet. And I'm like, okay, you you pass. Bless you, my son. Move on. And I asked my 14-year-old, he says pretty much the same thing, just in a different way. So I'm happy about that. But we all talk about the 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 crisis, the crisis gripping America, ADHD, uh, and and the social media depression. But what do we do? We advertise on TikTok. All the brand companies advertise on TikTok. You know, you're going to take a stand for social justice. How about you take a stand for mental justice, right? Instead of telling me about mental health issues, how about you deal with them? How about you stop putting everything on TikTok? And I, because it's all about the money and the ADHD. How about you stop, stop and stop making cartoons that cut back and forth. 10 seconds here, 10 seconds there. That person who doesn't have ADHD can't take it. You're, you're driving me nuts. It's like clockwork orange here. Just put toothpicks in my eyes. So I, I, I but make it stop. 
but we feed into it. Why? Because it's successful. This is instead of treating addictions, instead of, instead of treating ADHD and, and doing all these things that we're supposed to do, we feed into it because it makes it successful. The TikToks, the Facebooks, the Instagrams, the, all of this stuff. Oh, an influencer. Stop with the nonsense. Stop with the influencers. I mean, seriously, I was outside today and I got stuck for a little while because was, I was in, caught in the rain and I'm underneath the gazebo in the backyard. So I started scrolling. I ran out of stuff to do. I'm pretty boring on social media or on my phone. I read the New York Post. I have uh, my email. Uh, I read the Washington post and then I have Facebook. So I go through Facebook and then something said, look at this on Instagram. So I went to Instagram scrolling, 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 scrolling. And I caught myself. I caught myself after 11 minutes because I was like, this is, I'm just looking at stupid, stupid stuff, stupid stuff, but it's out there and everybody's promoting it. Everybody's promoting it. We're not helping. Everybody says I have to help somebody else. Help, help me. I have to help and I'm not blaming TikTok. I'm not blaming Facebook. I'm not blaming. I, I, I am, but I'm not because I blame society as a whole because we talk out of both sides out of our mouths. Oh, we got to, we got to, we got to help the kids. We got to help the mental capacities. We got to be, 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 be. But guess what? We're going to put everything on TikTok and we're going to, you know, I want to be an influencer. I want to do this. That's America now. Talk out of both sides of your mouth. We're going to fix this, but we're not going to fix it. We're going to do this, but we're not going to do it. We're going to be tough on crime, but we're going to let guys, and this is the best part, the guys, real men of genius. This is the Bud Light. You want Bud Light back in the world? Bud Light, real men of genius. This guy up in New York has a blowtorch trying to get past everything, trying to melt the plastic that everything is behind and locked up with now at a CVS. He's got a blowtorch. He brought a blowtorch into a CVS so he could steal stuff. Don't tell me nothing's wrong. Don't tell me give everybody something. If there's no law and order, there's nothing. There's nothing. I mean, we're at, we're at a crossroads and everybody's laughing. And I, a couple weeks ago, right, Nero fiddled, Joe Biden fiddled. It doesn't matter. We're all fiddling because it doesn't affect us, right, until it affects you. How did it happen? Suddenly and then, or gradually and then suddenly. That's how it affects you because it's coming. It is coming to your doorstep. Do something about it. If it's not already there. And you've got your head in the sand. And I'm serious. I, 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 I don't even know where I was going with this podcast, which is a big surprise, right? I never know where I'm going. But this is the kind of stuff we feed into it. We don't help. We talk about it. And then we feed into it. Both sides of our mouths. Dad, I'll clean my room. But I'm not going to clean my room. Think about that. Seriously. ADHD. Oh, let's make short, quick cuts so people, you know, we can attract the ADHD crew. God forbid. You know, I, I was thinking about it as a kid. Maybe, you know, I'm watching uh, Teen Titans or any cartoon or any movie now. It doesn't matter. And then I think about the old days, the old days where I had to spend 30 minutes watching Greg Brady to the end. Or I had to watch Gilligan's Island to the end. I had to sit there for 22, 24 minutes and figure out story from beginning to end. There weren't seven stories within 20 minutes. Train your mind. And now everybody's got a self-help book. Train your mind. Do this, do that. Do it from the start. Why does everybody have to do it individually? Why don't, you know, we are, it's such a crisis. Then let's take care of it. Come on, America, get it done. But Mr. Bruce, that means we'd lose out on money. Yeah, I know. I know, but maybe we would be better off. And what are you going to do with your money, right? Over, overgrow, you know, overexpand. So you're going to have to fire everybody at the end. You see where I'm coming with this? Do you, do you, do you understand? Open your window, run to it. Say I'm mad as hell. I'm not going to take it anymore. So I was listening to the radio the other day. I was listening to Elliot in the morning. I don't know. I just stumbled upon it. I knew about Elliot a uh, long time ago, but I just, I don't know why I didn't listen to him before. You know, I'm in, in the mood. I, I like radio. I like to listen to radio. I like to listen to different people's takes, different people's uh, abilities, etc. 
he can be a bit annoying, no doubt, but somehow I was listening to this program on DC 101. They were talking about something, and then they were they were saying, some lady called up, and you go, you know, they say, they say, and so Elliot and the whole crew are like, they? Who are, who are they? And I was thinking, what a conundrum. Now with pronouns, and everybody using the pronouns, when you use a phrase, they say, it just might be one person. It might not be they. It might not be a consensus. It might just be one person with these new pronouns that we all have to use. They say, so you mean they, Harriet over there, or Edgar. <laughs> they say. You know, I, 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 I thought one of the most ridiculous things in the world was the Abbott and Costello, Abbott and Costello, uh, who's on first. Can you imagine what they would do with pronouns right now? Oh, they say, and he or she is over there at second base. Uh, he first base. <laughs> I mean, seriously, <laughs> I just think about it. What they could have done with what's going on now. So don't trust anything that they say, because they might not be. They might just be one person. It's not a consensus. It's not. They think the movie's no good. Well, they. Okay. They as in the group of everybody? No, just they, him, Harriet, Edgar. Could be just they. Conundrums. Building on it. Building on it and building on it. But we're just letting it go because, oh, it's all right. It's okay. It's just confusing. It's okay to confuse everybody, but that's okay. What's up? Gina, are we ready? Okay.